Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Welcome to the house of God. This is Koinonia. We have a lot to do tonight and um, we have to work with time. Praise the name of the Lord. Let me start by welcoming everyone, our online family and all who are here. May the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. Your life will never be the same after tonight in Jesus name. Um, we'll take a few minutes, just a few minutes to pray in the spirit as we prepare for tonight. Now here's what will happen. Please listen. Every time here counts and we want to maximize the time as much as possible. As soon as we're done praying and you sit down, um, the ushers will start passing around with the communion. Just pick yours and you can just keep it so that when it's time to minister the communion, you can just pick it. That way we'll conserve time. Is that fine? Please, may I request um, that you just pick one. Don't pick more than one. It's not necessary. Just pick one and pass it. The same way you drop your offering, just pick one and then pass. And then when we're done and you minister the communion, be patient. Please don't litter the ground. Just be patient. The buckets will be passed and you just drop yours and um, so that we make it orderly and we make it fast. Are you ready tonight? In one minute, I'd like you to pray in the spirit, opening your heart for what the Lord will be doing in our midst tonight. Everywhere, everyone, pray in the spirit. Shaprande ke paratos kalle prakasida, leke te prende ke parakos shada bala kuzia tabala. Let it be from the depth of your heart, your spirit connecting to the flow of what God is doing. You're praying in the spirit. The Bible says, "But ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost." Shadi bala hasada bakata pranda gada bala dolis. Embrata kasuda belekushia tabranda kasida. We pray opening up our spirits. We pray opening up our minds. Let your word prevail over the issues of concern. Pray in the spirit. Shabrindi baras subrati kaparados galibran dagada prati zapadia. Elante po shalakros kadila par haski de manakatosia. Engrete bekete pratash kada parakatos zapade kade kade balada bo. Emanda kaparonda skade balahas kade brandi kadia lahasiba. Rakosha kata branda kato siya kate balato siya ta. Embra kata brandi kate balako siya ta prates kate plasi prahastia. Ke brandi kato siya shate kate balaka ta priyata. You're expanding and enlarging your capacity to receive. One more minute. Sete prete kete balakusi ata. Embra ketu skati braha shala kata prete kete balakusi. Mata prata kata prete kete balakus kete blasi bahas kati ata.
holy holy i will bow before my lord and king hallelujah you have come to us and you make all things new Emmanuel Jesus Christ you never let me go my shepherd king you're watching over me Emmanuel. Father, we pray and we ask that you make your presence mighty and manifest in our midst. Finally, tonight, let age long captivities be broken. Open our eyes, O God, and establish our authority. Let there be a manifest display of the victory of Christ over Satan, over curses, over yokes, and everything that does not name the name of Christ. We open our spirits and we ask you to help us and show us mercy in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you. Please be seated. Complete deliverance part three. hallelujah okay so like i said the ushers are going around just speak your communion and then don't be distracted we're getting to the word um we'll have sessions to pray take the communion and then we'll minister the power of the holy spirit i am a believer in the christian experience that is backed up with signs and wonders i believe that jesus is alive and I believe in the total and complete victory of Jesus. The defeat of Satan, the defeat of yokes and curses is a reality. And in this series, our intent is to establish that reality practically in our lives. Hallelujah. Please, I want to plead with you to do well to listen to part one again listen to part two tonight i'm happy but then i'm also sad and i'll tell you why for both reasons i'm happy because someone's captivity is coming to an end i'm happy because tonight will be an opportunity to enlighten the body again as far as the dynamics of um, the ministry of deliverance is concerned but I'm sad because in preparing my notes for this night, I had to edit so many things. I, at a point in time, I, I had to just stop and rest my head and say, my God, to be able to do justice to this entire series in truth, I will tell you, it will require at least a six-part series, not just a three-part series. There are so many things I've had to take, in fact, the last time we did the mystery of deliverance, it was a four-part series. And this is now, we have to end for now. There are so many things that um, we need to know, but um, I may have to edit some of them. And then in teaching some of the things I'm teaching today, very sadly, I may not be able to press into the kind of depth that I would want to go. So this is where my sadness stems from. But then we have other series that are still related to this, and I hope that when we get there, we'll be able to just dot the I's and cross the T's. Albeit, we know that with what we have gotten tonight, it is sufficient alongside the ones that have come to grant us victory established in reality. If you are in agreement with me, say amen. amen. So let me apologize in advance. Honestly, I kept looking at my notes and wondering what I would teach and what I would omit because um, when it has to do with 
mentoring believers to thoroughly understand how to establish victory you should not omit anything provided it comes from scripture it is very important the bible says lest satan would take an advantage of us and the advantage comes by his accessing the loopholes and the gaps in our spiritual understanding but then we have to walk with the allowance that um, time has provided for us let me do a five minutes recap and then I'm holding my notes here I hope you have yours praise the name of Jesus our text for this series has been John 8:36, the Amplified John 8:36, the Amplified it says if the Son sets you free you are free indeed it says really and unquestionably free really and unquestionably free part one we began to discuss the biblical basis for the study of satan and demons we wanted to be sure that we're not walking in error as far as the word of god is concerned and we examined a few scriptures that give us the allowance to study on satan and demons we looked at the biblical basis for the study of satan and demons um, we looked at the old testament the life and the ministry of jesus jesus taught about the satanic kingdom he administered deliverance himself we looked at the life of the apostles and the early church they taught paul himself in his pauline epistles taught about the structure of the satanic kingdom and then he also taught uh, he administered deliverance then we looked at the origin of satan the origin of satan we couldn't do justice to the origin of demons the the concept of the nephilims the disembodied spirits and this is one of the things that now make me feel sad because we couldn't really press for the kind of knowledge that we need to have um, to understand where these disembodied spirits come from because if you understand that you will know why they crave for human bodies hallelujah and that every time demons are not in a human body they are in a perpetual state of torture and restlessness that you can be sure jesus himself taught us that every time a spirit demon spirits are within this territory and are not in a human or material body there is a consequence for being in this realm and not having a material body the consequence is torture because according to the law of territory every spirit that resides within this domain must be resident within a material body so even the holy spirit when he comes he lives within the believers are we together so you can be sure of this that demons are under a state of perpetual torture and restlessness every time they are not within a human body now human bodies according to scripture are not the only bodies that demons can occupy they can occupy animals they can occupy all kinds of things but the reason why human bodies are the most preferred is number one we are the zenith of god's creation the most complex of all his creation and then number two authority was given to the believer the human it wasn't given to animals and plants and so satan is most comfortable to wreck his antichrist agenda when he operates in and through a human body so we looked at that and then we looked at um, a bit of the reality of evil in scripture the fact that we live in a wicked world and that it takes understanding to be able to prevail part two last week we considered the structure and the operations of satan and demons i hope you still remember we looked at the structure of satan um, according to revelations we said that satan has angels and he fell together with a third of the angels and that satan alongside the demonic demons or evil spirits make up what we call the satanic kingdom we did emphasize that Satan has a singular assignment to fight and frustrate the purposes of God by any means. The theme that drives the activity of the satanic kingdom is to fight and frustrate 
the purposes of God. But Satan's unique goal and agenda is for transgenerational allegiance and dominion over the saints. You have to understand this. Satan has his personal manifesto, his personal agenda, and the satanic kingdom as an organized demonic kingdom also have their manifesto. Are we together? The drive for the entire satanic kingdom is to fight and frustrate the purposes of God by any means. By any means. Sickness, poverty, delay, retrogression, causes, yokes, by any means. But Satan, as the head of that kingdom, has his unique agenda. And the agenda is for complete dominance over the saints and then to create a system for transgenerational allegiance. I told you this is where the whole idea of causes and demonic patterns and yokes come from. They were a design to make sure that from one generation to the other, allegiance towards Satan remains um, a reality. So we, we dealt with Satan's operational system that Satan and demons fight they hinder, they resist, they kill, they steal, they destroy, and all of that. And I did tell us last week that of all the strategies and the operations of Satan, the most pronounced in the Bible is deception. You still remember? Yes. And that to deceive means to deliberately cause someone to believe something that is not true, usually for personal gain. Or to take an advantage of that person deception is to deliberately cause someone to believe something that is not true usually for personal gain we define deception or falsehood as a statement or an action that is intended to mislead hide the truth promote a false idea often for personal gain and we did say last week that deception cannot happen until the deceiver is aware of the truth. There is no possibility for deception until the person doing the deceiving, in this case Satan, you must be aware of the truth to be able to deceive. So Satan, by this definition, is not ignorant of the truth. Because deception is to deliberately manipulate someone to believe what is not true. Deception cannot happen until the deceiver is aware of the truth. We now look at a study on how Satan operates. I taught us last week that there are three levels of Satanic influences. I'm taking this because we have to connect from there to our teaching tonight. That the first is called witchcraft. And I did teach us that witchcraft necessarily does not deal with drinking blood eating flesh our traditional idea of witchcraft witchcraft simply means to cause you to think to cause you to act to cause you to talk in error using the tool of deception that is witchcraft all other traditional practices they may be expressions of deception but according to scripture deception means to cause a man to think to act and to talk in error using i mean witchcraft now using the tool of deception the second level is manipulation and control and i told us that this is largely in the realm of the mind and that believers even spirit-filled believers can be manipulated now you find out that every time you see or most times when you read scripture especially in the gospels when it has to do with demons and their victims it uses an english expression possessed now, not all the Greek words there mean possessed. In fact, most of the expressions is the word demonized. The word demonized there does not mean, it means to be under the influence or some level of control of demons. We agreed that there is manipulation and control and that even believers can be victims of this. And then the third level is complete influence and control. We call that possession where your spirit, your mind, and your body comes under the total influence of that spirit. We agree that a Christian cannot be possessed by the definition of possessed now. 
that means when you come into Christ through the new birth experience you are joined to Christ and the Bible declares that he that is joined to Christ remember is one spirit so a believer cannot be possessed but a believer can be demonized a believer can be controlled at the solical realm are we together yes now we define deliverance and I'll end my recap from that definition that deliverance essentially has to do with rescue and freedom from bondage from danger or evil the whole idea of deliverance has to do with rescue and freedom from bondage from danger and from evil deliverance has to do with salvation to salvage an individual from a condition or from an influence here is the definition of deliverance I gave us last week please listen if you have it down and you write if you do not have it down deliverance is the scriptural strategy for experientially establishing the victory and the authority of Jesus Christ over Satan and demonic forces as it relates to the life and the destiny of a believer that means when we have to do with deliverance deliverance is a scriptural strategy for experientially establishing the victory and the authority of Jesus Christ over Satan and demons as it relates to the life and the destiny of the believer I wrote here deliverance and by extension spiritual warfare for the believer please listen is about establishing and manifesting victory rather than fighting for it a very important thought that biblical deliverance is based on the fact that we are establishing and manifesting the victory that is in Christ not fighting for it to fight for it in the sense of hoping we will get it is saying that the work of the cross was a lie are we together now when Jesus said it is finished he meant it his victory over Satan sin hell and the grave was total it was complete our assignment now is to engage the weapons of victory we have been given to establish and manifest that which is finished his finished work is the basis for our audacity to even dare to establish that so you have to understand this because there are many expressions of deliverance in the body of Christ that does not really stem from the victory of Christ that is already defeat from day one if you ever approach the subject of deliverance and Satan demonology as though you are not sure of Jesus's victory and you are not sure of Satan's defeat you are hoping that as you contend you will find out who won that you are already defeated that ignorance is your defeat you don't need to be fought you are already defeated are we together so deliverance for a believer is about establishing and manifesting victory not fighting for it hallelujah so part three now we'll begin our discussion we'll be very fast may the lord grant us grace in jesus name um the chief sponsor i spoke last week let me also touch this that of all the manipulations of satan and the satanic kingdom and as complex and as complicated as it is world over there are only three access points remember that satan has only three access points as revealed from scripture there are only three access points by which satan and demons access men even believers number one covenants number two ignorance number three disobedience one more time number one covenants number two ignorance number three disobedience these are the only scriptural access points if satan ever has an advantage on the believer these are the only access points so if you can close these doors satan truly in experience will remain helpless over your life i taught you that of these three the most effective for satan strangely are covenants why because covenants are 
transgenerational in context and then covenants can be territorial your ignorance affects you your disobedience affects you even though it can spill to others but principally you are the chief victim but covenants can bring whole territories under the siege of satan on legal grounds that covenants are empowered by altars remember the teaching that an altar is a system of authorization that are built to make sure that the terms of the covenant keep running even when the initiator of the covenant is no longer there please understand this now that means if a covenant is set with the devil for poverty or for untimely death there must be an altar the altar is like the battery that powers that covenant the altar is a system of authorization and it is usually ratified with blood take note of blood because we'll be dealing with it very seriously are we together yes every altar is powered by blood the human blood animal blood whatever it is so the altar ensures that the terms of the covenant keep happening to the participants or the victims of the covenant even when the initiator is long gone so altars make covenants powerful covenants are not powerful in themselves altars are the systems of compliance that make sure that even though you were not there when the covenant was put in the altar will ensure that the covenant based on the terms of agreement it will fish you out and execute the terms to the latter let me tell you covenants are precise except on him that they will happen exactly as agreed no matter your enlightenment you will be shocked and surprised the terms it will happen that way whether it's a covenant of whatever it is untimely death covenant of whatever it is you worship satan he will give you this if you violate it there will be consequences if covenants are not superimposed by the things that you're going to be learning today it will walk to the latter you can go abroad you can travel to europe you can travel to america the covenant will slowly haunt you there and with the precision of a surgeon it will execute everything as agreed most people think because you run away from the physical location where the covenant happened you are free this is the deception that has tied down people so just because you ran away from the village or you ran away from the place where the shrine was or even because you destroyed the shrine and set it on fire you can say it is done time will show whether it is truly done because covenants and altars are spiritual are we learning now both covenants listen carefully disobedience ignorance depend on a state there is something they look for in every human to walk this is called the flesh write it down oh dear i wish i had time we'll just touch on this quickly so that we will rush the concept of the flesh is one that i submit to you has not been thoroughly understood in the body of christ the reason for a justifiable reason when you read the pauline epistles and you you read about the frustrations of paul and believers um it, it makes you confused as to the flesh versus with respect to the victory that is in christ the flesh romans chapter 7 and verse 18 i'll just touch it very briefly and then we'll rush romans 7 18 here's what paul said paul himself got to a point where he was venting his frustration he couldn't keep quiet again this is paul already in ministry for i know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing for to will is present with me he says but how to perform that which is good i find not paul 
then he began to speak when you read further he says for with my spirit i serve the lord but in my body i see another law working in my members he was so frustrated he said oh wretched man that i am who shall deliver me from this body of death this was the apostle expressing his frustration i thought i now have victory in christ why then is this flesh alive in me when you read galatians chapter 5 from verse 16 down to 21 particularly 16 and 17 let's look at it for reference this i say then apostle paul is speaking walk in the spirit he says and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh 17 he says for the flesh this is a very powerful information the flesh lusted against the spirit fight contend and the spirit against the flesh he says and these are contrary one to the other so that ye cannot do the things that ye would now let me clear that confusion by the spirit of god please look up revelation is powerful oh, in the name of jesus what you don't know can destroy you satan can use the gaps in your knowledge and confuse you and take an advantage of you now what believers do not know theologically is that the flesh what the flesh means to the unbeliever is not the same thing as what the flesh means to the believer listen carefully there is the flesh as a concept before salvation and there is the flesh as a concept after salvation they are all called flesh but the character of their operation is not the same let me just put that in perspective and we jump is that all right what is the flesh before salvation that means with respect to an unbeliever the flesh with respect to an unbeliever is called the sin nature do not forget this it is called the sin nature what is the sin nature it is a nature of speaking it is a nature of thinking it is a nature of acting it is a nature of living that will always be against the word of god i'll take it again the flesh before salvation this is the first dimension of our concept of the flesh according to scripture the flesh before salvation that means when you are dealing with the subject of the flesh with respect to an unsaved person the flesh means the sin nature a nature of speaking a nature of thinking a nature of acting and a nature of living that will always the key word is always always be against the word of god it's called the flesh furthermore i wrote this this is the very nature of satan at work in the spirit the mind and the body of the unregenerate man this is the very nature of satan at work in the spirit the mind and the body of the unregenerate man are we together yes so to the unbeliever when you mention the word flesh from a biblical standpoint now it means the embodiment of that sin nature the very nature of satan that was the nature that came upon man by reason of his fallen state when man fell among the many tragedies that happened to him was that he lost the life of god in replacement to that life he had and became an embodiment of the sin nature when the bible says he who knew no sin became sin jesus himself had to subscribe to that sin nature to destroy it this nature this sin nature that is exactly what the death the burial and the resurrection of jesus defeated that nature are we together now so the concept of the flesh to the unbeliever or before salvation has to do with the very nature of satan and that is what the death the burial and the resurrection of jesus a legitimate ground to cut you away from the influence of that life the very nature that the death the burial and the resurrection of jesus defeated is called the sin nature or you find it in the bible the flesh that is one side now when you are saved to the believer in christ 
sadly and strangely the bible also uses the concept of the flesh but now this time around the idea of the flesh with respect to one who is in christ does not necessarily mean the sin nature again there is a word for the flesh for the believer it is called self are you seeing that now self the nature of self we have a teaching in the nearest future to deal with this so i won't go into that that deep but if you have the chance to listen to my teaching sadly it's an audio christ-centered living please listen to it christ-centered living i teach there about self that all of the limitations of the believer in christ who although the victory of christ has conquered the sin nature that we call flesh there is still another dimension of of, of flesh that the bible calls self the inability to intentionally live your life with the consciousness that everything about you should glorify the Lord is called self the Bible says glorify the Lord with your body which is the Lord's so the nature of self that the Bible calls flesh in the believer is what produces the numerous ills that now plague the believers that Paul is saying look with my spirit I serve the Lord but in my body even though I am saved I still see another law that does not negate the victory of Christ this is self and the key to the defeat of that self is found in Galatians chapter 5 verse 16 this I say walk ye in the spirit now you can see that the solution is not being born again not being saved he's talking to people who are already saved that you must walk in the spirit in fact he says set your affections on things above and not on the things that are earthly and then when you read on dealing with that again Paul the apostle himself would tell you I die daily I crucify the flesh that nature of self that seeks it is because of the appetite for self glorification and vainglory the absence of the consciousness that you have been bought with a price that can open you up to a plethora of ills and he's saying the cure is to be spirit minded the cure is to deaden this flesh we'll look at it when we get to deliverance proper are you blessed now so let me just stop here for the flesh now you understand that when the bible talks of the flesh as dealing with the unregenerate man is simply talking of the sin nature there is no amount of counseling that will solve that problem that nature needs to be replaced completely and only the death the burial and the resurrection of jesus the life of god is the cure for that nature are we together when he expresses frustration oh wretched man that i am romans 7 who shall deliver me from this body of death then romans chapter 8 from verse 1 now began a discourse he said there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in christ jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit verse 2 says for the law of the spirit of life in christ jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death are we together administering deliverance let's deal with the administration of deliverance now now you'll be you'll be learning practically how to be free from demons how to be free from curses how to be free from yokes of darkness please listen to this first for yourself but listen so that God can use you as an envoy of deliverance for others are we together in this kingdom you don't just learn for yourself for the promise is unto you and your children and your children's children as many as are far off even as many as the Lord your God will call now there are three levels of deliverance write it down please complete and entire and total deliverance is in three levels this upfront explains the reason 
why many people experience what we call partial deliverance the bible is very clear jesus himself in his teaching about demons and how they operate told us that it is possible for a man to be temporarily free of demon spirits and then the demons reinforce and return back so that the state of that man is worse than what it was initially jesus is teaching here so we know for a shorty that it is possible for someone to be delivered sincerely and yet the deliverance is not complete can i be honest with you there are many many believers in this kingdom who are victims of this largely because of ignorance are we together most of what people call deliverance in the body of christ is only the first step of bible deliverance are you ready to learn number one the first level of deliverance i wrote here the first level of deliverance is casting out the spirit influences over your life and at the back of your challenges i will take it slowly the first level of deliverance has to do with casting out the spirit casting out the spirit influences in your life and at the back of your challenges may i tell you that demons do not only possess and influence men they can possess conditions they can possess things hmm. a financial condition a spirit can enter that condition and it no longer becomes an economic condition listen there is a financial condition that is an economic condition and unassisted by any demonic means it should not it should not threaten you beyond the laws of economics if you obey the laws of economics it should bring that condition back to order but when that condition defy even your obedience a spirit has possessed that condition spirits don't just possess men they can possess things they can possess conditions so when we talk about casting out demons it does not only have to be out of men you can cast demons out of conditions listen i can be exhausted and by the simple biological system in a man chances are excellent that when you are exhausted based on the biological construct of your body you may have a headache you may have whatever it is it's not necessarily demonic but demons can enter that situation at that point panadol will act like water it will not do anything to that condition that is the reason why you will see that there are many sicknesses that spirits initiated it or took advantage of the health conditions and entered it jesus as we'll be learning would often cast out the spirit influence then he can now deal with the, the issue are you seeing now very powerful james chapter 2 and verse 26 let me show you something a very powerful principle apostle james was teaching us about faith and works and he veered off to explain a very deep and powerful spiritual concept he said for as the body without the spirit is dead he he draws from a mystery and a spiritual principle to help us understand faith and works that means everything that is alive both men and conditions there must be a spirit giving it life do we agree if there is favor on your life physically paul is saying that physical result are we to apostle james he's saying that physical result is not normal there is a spirit that is powering it to happen if there is disfavor he's also saying that physical condition is being powered by a spirit because anybody that does not have a spirit is dead you can build a body call your business but there has to be a spirit that gives it life and if there is no spirit and it is empty satan will come and occupy that business and the business will start acting the same way a demon possessed person acts 
are we together now you will be surprised that a business the same thing that happens to a human being possessed will happen to your business nobody will come it will be isolated it will go down it will be in decadence a whole territory can be possessed by spirits and you find out that even the physical structures will look like the spiritual state of that place for as a body without the spirit is dead your certificate is a body if all you keep moving around with it you are wasting your time because it is dead there has to be a spirit now unbelievers know this they know this in politics they know this in the business world every physical thing you have is called a body it only has life when it comes from the spirit that empowers it are you learning you only draw your life and strength from your union with the spirit ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10 will come there later on but give us amplified ephesians 6 and verse 10 please read with me what amplified says are you ready it's projected one to read in conclusion be strong in the lord it says be empowered through your union with him draw your strength from him that strength which is boundless might be empowered through your union with him your remote control as powerful as it is needs a battery to power it that battery is the spirit of that remote because that's what gives it life is that true when you pour a liquid into your car you call it PMS premium mortal spirit and you pour that thing inside a physical car and kick it and it starts going and if that thing finishes no matter what your car is it will remain there a body without a spirit is dead as big as your generator is let everything be alive and that fuel that diesel gasoline everything is gone and you will kick it and waste your time what makes you believe your business and your life and your family and your job and your destiny will only move as physical structures there must be a spirit component you actually believe koinonia is just a physical organization that's a mistake can a physical organization do this there has to be a spirit There are results that men cannot produce unassisted. There has to be a spirit component. May your life begin to, to shock you even from today in the name of Jesus Christ. Listen, when you know this, you don't fear because you are not alone. If you depend on all you have, you are not much. But when the spirit component comes, how many of you have seen a tiny remote that you can be playing with like this? You go and, now I'm not encouraging terrorism in Jesus' name, but those who are in the army, what they use to activate bombs, sometimes it can be a tiny substance like this. They can hold it around. But let them press that tiny thing and something that is in the sea or somewhere can explode and literally wipe a whole nation in a matter of minutes or hours you can be small but let that spirit component back you you will have results that defy explanations sometimes you have to stop yourself and say what is this may that be someone's testimony after tonight in the name of Jesus Christ so when you see extraordinary results don't ask spiritually childish questions where did it come from you know the answer there has to be a spirit you go back and from tomorrow you see what begins to happen to you in your business your shop has been running as an economic structure change it to a spiritual structure invite the holy spirit to be in partnership you've been doing your work just as an intellectual add the spirit component and watch the wonder working power of the spirit believe me i know what i'm saying 
When you hold my hands, everything becomes possible. When you hold my hands, impossible becomes possible. When you hold my hands, everything becomes possible. When you hold my hand, impossible, impossible becomes possible. So let's go back to what we are dealing with. I told you that there are spirits that attach themselves to your spirit in the case of a possession, to your soul and to your body. And the legal access like we have learned is through covenants, through disobedience, and through ignorance. So the first step in deliverance is casting out devils. Do you see that casting out devils is not deliverance? Casting out devils is part of deliverance. There is a difference between deliverance and casting out devils. Casting out devils is a subset of deliverance. Just because you have casted out devils does not mean you have administered deliverance. Is someone learning? Is God giving us wisdom? We generally say, I have been delivered. And in that you are right. But theologically speaking, casting out demons or the spirit influence behind individuals, behind conditions, behind states, is only one of the aspects. Let's look at a few scriptures. Mark chapter 1, the ministry of Jesus. Is God helping us? Let's rush. Mark chapter 1 from verse 22. Mark chapter 1 from verse 22. The Bible says they were astonished at his doctrine. For he taught them as one that had authority. Listen, this is the first miracle of Jesus according to the synoptic account of Mark. The Bible says as one that had authority and not as the scribes. 23 and there was in their synagogue now are you seeing this now the man with an unclean spirit do you think he came to church believing he had an unclean spirit was he acting like a man with an unclean spirit he came as a very faithful congregant and he sat quietly but the bible says that man had an unclean spirit and he cried out the spirit not the man next verse saying let us alone so you, you know that that man was heavily under the influence of spirits let us alone what have we to do with you thou jesus of nazareth art thou come to destroy us i know who thou art can you imagine that demons know jesus more than believers in an instant they knew without confusion you are the holy one of god 25 this is the first recorded activity of casting out demons by jesus remember i taught you that until jesus showed up they had never seen casting out demons by a name no it had never happened for a man to use his authority and rebuke a spirit demons had left people they left in worship in the case of david and in most cases they will stone the person who the demons possess so that if that body dies the spirit will struggle to look for another body again but this was the first time they saw a man with the precision of a surgeon. He can remove the spirit and leave the victim alive. They said, who is this? Where did you bring this doctrine from? We thought that when a man is demonized or possessed, that man is over. But now Jesus is saying you can preserve the man by expelling the spirit. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, hold thy peace and come out of him. I love Jesus. Mm. Verse 26, when the unclean spirit had torn him, are you seeing some of these characteristics? That means it is not unusual. Now, please pay attention. I know that, again, when I speak like this, there is always a boundary of balance. But it is not unusual to find out that at the process of expelling spirits, they can talk through their victims or there can be manifestations. It is not unscriptural. Satan can take advantage of it, but it's a very usual occurrence. Jesus himself showed us here. Are we together? 
and cried with a loud voice and came out of him 27 we're reading to 28 the bible says they were amazed in so much that they questioned among themselves saying what thing is this what new doctrine is this for with authority commanded he even the unclean spirits and they obey him may they obey you in the name of jesus christ with authority that you can step into a business and someone can say listen i hear you attend koinonia i i know you have spiritual understanding my entire my whole life is come is crumbling and with the wisdom of one who has been well trained you look at the situation and you can see the signs you know that this is beyond a sociological problem you can detect the presence of demons and while the person hopes that you will comfort them in their lamentation you will tell them my idea of comfort is not crying with you it's bringing liberty to you and you look at that situation this financial situation in the name of Jesus the spirit that is behind it you drive it away and somebody will say my my contract that has not been signed now you know that it's not just a man stopping it behind it there are spirits and they were amazed and they said what is this 28 the last verse now and immediately his fame there is something about authentic biblical deliverance it truly makes noise can I tell you, casting out demons is one of the clearest expression of the superiority of light over darkness. Now, forget about the bad experiences you may have had in the body of Christ. Just allow me to teach you doctrine. Just because you've had bad experiences somewhere, you went to one place or maybe some demonic thing somewhere, I am telling you, if authentic deliverance happens, the testimonies that follow will be too it will be even if you are an introvert you'll be too grateful to keep quiet because you see the way demons operate they operate like an octopus you know how it is with plenty it will usually not touch only one area so there are areas in your life you would not even expect a miracle from but when that one spirit goes it's like wildfire in one day doors can open listen if you are healed in your body of say diabetes it will not affect your finances because this has to do with your body but let one spirit that has been sitting quietly over the many areas of your life i tell you if that one spirit is genuinely fired out of your body and out of your situation things will change most situations that people have hear me are powered by demons if i ask you write your prayer request you can write 30 things you will be surprised that all those 30 things is the same spirit sitting on it so god does not answer one 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 he goes to the root that spirit i'm showing you why casting out demons if done biblically can work wonders I have seen this happen in the life of people they came for prayer apostle this is what is wrong with me bad dreams or whatever it is and of course they will usually have other problems but in order of priority they want to deal with the one they consider to be most important and when they come to me i look at their situation and i know and i tell them you just get ready for testimonies and sometimes just hours after that do you know let me tell you until you are really 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 delivered you don't know how many things satan is stopping let the deliverance fire of god authentic fire land upon your life and you will see that there were many things that were supposed to have happened to you for your good whereas your area of focus for a miracle is just a job Whereas your area of focus is just your health, you do not know a lot of other things that are piling up in the realm of the spirit, blocked by the presence of spirits. That's why I told you when deliverance happens, the fame, the testimonies from it. You will see people listing testimonies as if they are lying because one spirit left. 
you see you come for prayer and usually you pray for yourself but the same spirit oppressing you is the one oppressing your elder brother the one oppressing your elder sister so when it leaves you are not the only one who smiles we are here for you come and do what you do we are here for you come and do what you do set our hearts for you so you'll do what you do we need a move Can I tell you this? Let me tell you the truth. As uncomfortable as ministering and casting out demons are, I'm not talking of many of the imbalances I have learned in my life. When you truly love people and you want to help them, if you genuinely love people more than your reputation, get demons out of their way and watch the wonder working power why should a hard-working man not be able to pay the school fees of a child what is it about school fees are you that dull i tell you there is a demon spirit what is it about a young man who begins to work and cannot own a house of or of his own you are in a city of blessings it's not normal what of those who receive payment they will tell you i got 10 million i got 20 million I'm, I'm a sincere person I love God where the money went to I don't know let me tell you where it went to there are spirits your eyes can only see so much my dear people please take seriously what I'm telling you because this night I assure you by the God of heaven you came that God will bring this thing to an end now please sit down hallelujah there are spirits that when these spirits manifest people will always misunderstand you listen when jesus became seen something happened to him jesus who was an epitome of the love of god was standing barabbas who was a confirmed criminal was standing they told men choose who should leave they chose barabbas when people rejection has an explanation why will you choose barabbas somebody who probably stole from your house he was caught in your presence and yet you chose so you see what certain politicians do let me leave that for another day if you are not empowered by the spirit you will call evil light you will call light evil you will walk consciously to evil the people that chose Barabbas were not wicked people. They, they, they found themselves saying, let a curse come on us and our children. And Jesus was just watching them. That is the same way there will be a job that can lift you and bless you. There will be another one that will destroy you. You will sit down and that spirit can come upon you. And you will get up and throw away a job that is full of destiny helpers. There are people who had jobs that if they listened to, it would have blessed them. But a spirit came upon them and made that job look like it's an interruption to ministry. They left the job in a bit to become preachers. And they found out later they made a big mistake. May your eyes be open in this series. In the name of Jesus Christ. Luke chapter 13. Luke chapter 13. We want to see how spirits cause even health conditions. Verse 10. Luke 13 verse 10. And he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. Are we still here? Next verse please, quickly. And behold, there was a woman which had a what? Spirit of infirmity. Remember I taught you last week that spirits are also identified. Demons, unclean spirits. They are identified by the character of what they do. A spirit of infirmity. How long? If you ever believe that time casts out demons, learn again from this story. 
that time will not exit a demon it can sit on your life from when you are small and if allowed until the day you go to heaven or hell where based on what choice of salvation you make it can remain there 18 years the bible never said this woman was a backslider she was going to church every time and yet that spirit will follow her to church share the grace and go back follow her to church share the grace and go back 18 years until jesus came you're a man of god may you be a man of god on fire yeah. let people not come and sit down under the influence of your grace and you share the grace and all this backlog of trouble go with them there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years look at this the bible says she was bowed together something like this and could not lift herself now physically will you see a spirit on her no doctors are here they would be able to give it a medical name do you think in that 18 years someone was not compassionate enough to try to treat her verse 12 the bible says when jesus saw her he called her to him and he said to her listen to what he said woman thou art loosed so she was bound if you look at somebody bending you would just say okay maybe it's just cold maybe the weather maybe some kind of medical condition maybe your your spine and all of that and jesus is saying all that explanation you are giving is correct from the physical realm but from the realm of the spirit i wonder what they use to tie her it can be a rope that for 18 years nothing has happened to it verse 13 and he laid his hands are you seeing now the bible says he loosed her from the influence of that spirit then he now laid his hands on her and immediately she was made straight and glorified god read on look at what happened he's giving an explanation here is the explanation i'm interested in the ruler of the synagogues answered with indignation now you know why they were angry were they angry on their own with what i've taught you now because jesus had healed on the sabbath day look at a silly reason for anger that he healed on sunday on well sabbath then was saturday and said unto the people there are six days which men ought to walk in them therefore come and be healed and not on the sabbath day that was the anger of the people you can see that if you look at people you can have compassion because you see how foolish their ideas are you know they are empowered by demon spirits how do you get angry for a woman who has been healed for 18 years the first thing to do is congratulate her at least and yet they were angry that anger is not normal humans will rejoice with a woman that way but humans empowered by demons will behave like demons that you have received a testimony after 18 years and people are clapping for you and there is actually a human being who looks at you and is not interested in the victory after 18 years and he's warning you that his, his mind is on the sabbath as if it affected him directly verse 15 the lord answered him and said thou hypocrite look at jesus jesus is about to get them doth not each one of you on the sabbath lose your ox aha uh -huh. are you seeing now they had animals and they don't tie them on sunday to respect the sabbath because they need them to feed and be fat so that they can sell them and he said you're a hypocrite you can lose your donkey or your goat on sunday to still eat or, or on the sabbath to eat grass and here is a woman the bible says you can lose them a way to eat and then verse 16 let's hurry up Jesus is saying, ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, that means do you not know there is a covenant? What is the covenant? In thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. That means this woman qualifies based on my agreement with Abraham because Abraham's covenant was to him and to his seed. That the seed being Christ, and he has come now as an expression of his compassion. Lo, these 18 years be loosed 
from this bound other versions say who satan had bound for 18 years many health conditions hear me believers many health and medical conditions i submit to you by the authority of scripture have demons behind them i have ministered to people you've you've seen miracles happen here i have seen people whole families that were healed of hiv not stage managed nonsense genuine miracles because the hiv did not come it was not in their bloodline i've heard people tell me i went to bed true story and i saw someone holding a syringe an injection he injected me with whatever it is i woke up physically and started reacting either to hiv or whatever it is they would be on antiretrovirals it would not work and yet the power of god comes in one moment and that devil of darkness leaves you've seen miracles happen right here in your presence just like that that's how it will happen in your life this night in the name of jesus christ one last scripture luke 11 and 14 very simple scripture i want to show you how that demon spirits are behind many cases of ill health the bible says and he was casting out a devil the he being jesus and it was dumb the victim and it came to pass when the devil was gone out what happened the dumb spake and the people wondered that means anything in your life that is not speaking there is a spirit when that spirit is cast out that thing starts speaking whether it's your influence whether it's your honor whether it's your glory the dumb speak now in scripture you will see two expressions when it has to do with expelling demons number one is the word rebuked number two the word cast out it is these are very usual expressions when it has to do with casting out demons rebuked or you know to cast out take note of that and then i told you notice that the spirits were identified based on the issues that they caused let's look at one more scripture for sake of time acts chapter 16 acts chapter 16 i'm showing you the first level of deliverance casting out the demons the spirit influences verse 16 acts 16 verse 16 it came to pass as we went to prayer a certain damsel with a spirit of divination met us which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying we were discussing this with our school of ministry students and we were laughing that not all profit is profit here is a relationship between a spirit of divination and profit she brought her masters profit and yet it was by the spirit of divination 17. the bible says and the same followed paul and us and cried saying these are men these men are the servants of the most high were they lying Please talk to me. Were they lying? Which show us the way to salvation. What is more accurate than what this girl said? 18. The Bible says, This she did many days. But Paul being grieved, turned and said to the spirit, not the girl, the spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus, come out of her. And he came out the same hour he came out the same hour note that manifestations when casting out demons is usual and biblical 
that means it does not mean there has to be manifestations when you cast out demon spirits but that even when it happens it is not unusual like you see all the time here it does not necessarily mean that the people are possessed now you know that there are different levels when you are ministering when you are casting out devils or ministering deliverance as we know both the unbeliever who is possessed and the spirit who is demonized they will manifest the same way and so you can mistake it to mean that they are possessed but christians cannot be possessed by demon spirits are we together now the second level of deliverance very quickly is what i call deliverance through transformation this is the level that is probably most neglected by many believers they do not know that this is a second level of deliverance please write deliverance through transformation and that by the word of god deliverance through transformation the second level of deliverance in mark chapter 5 the story of the madman in gadara mark chapter 5 we'll read verse 15 Please let's hurry up for sake of time. Mark chapter 5 and verse 15. Remember, before now, Jesus had casted that legion of the legion of devils out of the man. And then, you know, the story got to town and people rushed and came. Here's what the Bible says happened. They came to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion. What did they see him do? Sitting. And cloth in his right mind so in as much as the demon had been casted out you would think that's all but the man was sitting and listening to Jesus and now his mind was becoming right the demon can leave but your mind can be wrong are we together now the second level of deliverance seeks to bring that transformation to your mind write this down please Deliverance through transformation involves a reorientation of your spiritual understanding. Please write that down. Deliverance through transformation involves a reorientation of your spiritual understanding. Now that the spirit influence has been cast out in the name of Jesus, you need a reorientation to change your thinking and your perception because i taught you that strongholds are negative mindsets or belief systems that have been fortified by the presence of demon spirits to keep the victim perpetually in that state deliverance through transformation seeks to bring a reorientation of your spiritual understanding write this down deliverance through transformation involves opening the believer to the nature and the character of god then the principles of the kingdom deliverance through transformation involves opening the believer up to the nature and the character of god and then the principles of the kingdom that means the second level is that the believer is opened up to understand the nature and to understand the character of God and then to also understand the principles of the kingdom if you're with me say amen. amen so number one a reorientation of your spiritual understanding opening you up to the nature and the character of God and then the principles of the kingdom write this down please transformation closes the door of ignorance and empowers the believer to rise above the influence of demons i'll take it again transformation closes the door of ignorance transformation closes the door of ignorance and empowers the believer to rise above the influence of demons how true transformation closes the door of ignorance and empowers the believer to rise above the influence of demons if a door is not open demons cannot come and ignorance is one of the doors or access points the assignment of transformation is that when the demon goes out then transformation now closes that door otherwise the demon will say i will return back to my house it can find it swept it can find it clean but still opened are we learning 
finally transformation tears down negative thought patterns transformation tears down negative thought patterns that hitherto had been doorways for demons transformation tears down negative thought patterns or mindsets you may call them transformation tears down negative thought patterns that hitherto had been doorways for demons <clears throat> listen listen carefully write this down and listen let me take it one more time transformation tears down negative thought patterns that hitherto had been doorways for demons now please pay attention demons don't just find comfort arbitrarily they depend on the wrong mental construct of the victim to keep remaining comfortable in that victim are we together so what demon spirits do is that before they attack an individual they bring together wrong information that constructs your mindset negatively and when they find that negative construction the demon spirits come and fortify that thought pattern so that you will not change from thinking that way now it becomes a free way for them because provided you have a negative thought pattern no matter how many times they cast out demons they will go with joy because they know the door is open you are not afraid of leaving your house because you have the key is that true have you had times where you left the key inside or for some reason you don't have the key and the door was locked now you get stranded and you get afraid demon spirit need not be afraid if they still have a firm control of your negative thought pattern please you have to learn this many believers rejoice in the fact that they've been free from demon spirits but these spirits easily and almost effortlessly return to the people why because they do not contend for transformation the moment they are delivered they say amen or demons are casted out they say amen they are happy and then they are flattered by the instant results they begin to receive and they no longer come to church they no longer open up themselves to the ministry of the teaching priest you see one of the blessings of coming to the house of god is that you are submitting your mindset are we together now the word of god attacks your mindset directly it begins to deconstruct the old and poor and negative thinking patterns that came from culture poor prior mentorship are we together inaccurate understanding of scripture because i told you the truth without balance can still destroy it so when you submit yourself to doctrine among the many things it achieves is it begins to give you a superior enlightenment say amen, amen. i wrote down here let's look at let me let me give you two or three more scriptures proverbs chapter 4 and verse 23 proverbs 4 and 23 thank you jesus it says keep or guard your heart with all diligence for out of it heart is interchanged for mind many times in scripture for out of it are the issues of life you have a responsibility to keep protect guard your mind guard your heart are we together romans chapter 12 and verse 2 it says and do not be conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind say the renewing of your mind most believers hate church and they don't know it's an attack believers like thanksgiving believers like celebration Believers like anniversaries. Believers like gathering picnics and all of these things. But the moment you say come to church to learn. Most believers see that. I'm showing you how these spirits work. As soon as the word of God is coming. They manifest as slumber. There is no reason to be tired. You didn't come from. You slept all day. And you are still sleeping in the house of God. 
Even when a loud song of worship is raised, you still don't wake up. It's an attack. Are we together? And then you find other expressions like distraction. When your word is about to come, your eyes just goes to your whatever it is, your, your phone, whatever they are sending. And it may not be something that is so necessary that you have to attend to. And before you know it, you are distracted and your word passes off you because you were not discerning. falls on bad ground good seed but bad ground and it does not produce any results listen i want you to be very intentional about your mental transformation through the word of god the true secret for sustaining your deliverance in addition to casting out the spirit influence that one can happen in a moment transformation does not happen in a moment it takes one shout of the name of Jesus to dislodge spirits no matter how age long. But it will take a while, quite a while, because you have to deconstruct your understanding across several thoughts and then begin to remold it again. That one is my assignment. And by the grace of God, he's granted me the grace to be a wise master builder and will build with intention, provided you are willing to allow your mind to be built. Can I tell you, there are people who sit in church and they, it's almost as if they have vowed not to change. No matter the fire that comes from the altar, you will be surprised how it will fall on a mind that has refused to change. You must open up your heart to be disloyal to any thoughts that is inconsistent with the ways of God. Are we together? Renewal and transformation happens through knowledge. Please write that down. Renewal and transformation happens through knowledge. Renewal and transformation happens through knowledge. Renewal and transformation happens through knowledge. Write this down, please. All believers need the ministry of the teaching priest. The teaching priest here can refer to your pastor, the apostolic ministry, any ministry that is committed to the sound teaching of the word. May I, by this church, encourage those who are ministry here and co-laborers in the gospel, please let us focus on building believers rather than exciting them it's good to excite because the gospel is called good news but we must obtain grace to sit down and teach please look up can i tell you the way i will preach in a conference or in a convention might be slightly different from the way i will teach you in koinonia koinonia this is home i seek to build methodically and so i'm not in a rush are we together in a conference you are bound by time you may just have a day or two a session or two so you can squeeze in anything there but when you are teaching your people settle down where are you rushing to they are there with you don't be under unnecessary competition to bring rema teach doctrine 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 teach and repeat what you taught again and repeat it again it must not always be newness but let it be freshness don't teach once and assume the people have gotten it. This is the secret that fathers like Papa Hagen and Copeland, they keep teaching and teaching to a point where the entire congregation gradually comes into that body of knowledge. When you assess the average member, you see that they have a thorough understanding of certain doctrines. Maybe not everything, but in the area of grace, they know it thoroughly. The average believer in the Nigerian church, I submit to you, not all the case, but most of the case, you call random, pick an average believer and interview the believer along the lines of spiritual knowledge and you will live there with pain in your heart. What do you know about God? What do you know about Jesus? He saved me. What else? Nothing. What do you know about the house of God? Nothing. What do you know about prayer? Nothing. What do you know about the Holy Spirit? Nothing. What do you know about finances? Nothing. What do you know about advancement? Nothing. What do you know about kingdom come? Nothing. What have you then been learning? Listen. 
I, I, when I came into the city, I was, I was surprised at the amount people pay for school fees. Now, let me ask you, dear parents, when you send your child to a school and stretch yourself from pillar to post to cough out the school fees and pay, and your child returns back with a clean uniform and you ask him a question, young man, what class are you? And he says, I'm in class, whatever he is. And then you ask him questions that relate to that class. He gets zero based on your, you are not the teacher. And yet what you are asking, he's not getting anything. You ask questions at a lower level. He still does not get anything. What are you going to do to the teacher? There's something called PTA. Is that true? Many of you will sit down there before it starts. You sit in front and say, listen, I, I need to, un who is teaching this child? How can I pay this much and my child is not getting anything? Math, zero, English, zero, whatever, zero. But there are schools that when you take your child, in three weeks, you will see the difference. Has that happened to you? May that be your school in Jesus' name. Three weeks. Obedient, cautious, intelligent. He speaks with you like an adult. And you say, who taught you? My teacher. What is the person's name? We, 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 he, he will articulate the name of the teacher. You can see students sit down with teachers and discussing with the intelligence of adults. If they tell you they've added the school fees by 200,000, it may not be the best, but you are motivated by that result. Members will not, will not indefinitely drag themselves to a place where they don't grow. They will be tired and one day, anything will be an excuse. Rain, fuel, Nigeria, anything will be an excuse. Yes. The consolation the consolation you have is that when you pay that price and get seated, you have done your own part. You allow the word of God to come. I vowed with God that I will never stand on this pulpit and waste your time, my dear people of God. I love Jesus and I love you too much to stand here and waste your time. Are we together? I cherish the sacrifice of your time traveling. There are people, did you know that there are people who don't live in Nigeria and travel every week? I've, I've found reasons to say, why don't you just come for miracle service? How do you leave another nation and come and sit down? And then I waste your time and share the grace. You go back with your challenges and there is nothing that is a token of the presence of God. Everybody say deliverance through transformation. Now, let me tell you this. When it has to do with deliverance through, through transformation, the man of God pioneers that process, but he's not the only one. Every parent has a responsibility to participate in this. Every young person has a... Any, once you are in any kind of position of leadership, you owe it to contribute to the transformation of those within your sphere of influence. Are we together? As wonderful as my example about the school is, you cannot leave the school to do 100% of the work for your child. You also have a role to play. Transformation is powerful. And hear me, transformation is not only a church thing. It is an everyday thing. Open yourself to truth. Technology has given us an unfair advantage. We have today. Just with the flip of your phone, checking a few things, you can have videos and materials at will and just listen. We have no excuse. Make up your mind that in the name of Jesus, you will contend for transformation. Let me tell you how to contend for transformation. Go and write a list of areas where you don't know anything about. Be very honest and sincere or that you do not know enough. First Corinthians 8 and verse 2. Very powerful scripture. Let me show you something there. If any man think that he knoweth anything, he said he knoweth nothing as he ought to know. That means you can know about faith, but not enough to give you the kind of victory you want. You can know about deliverance, but maybe at the peripheral level, there are still gaps in your understanding. You have a responsibility to continually upgrade until you gain mastery in the kingdom. If you're with me, say amen. amen. 
in Acts chapter 2 last scripture and then we'll jump to point number 3 in Acts chapter 2 from verse 42 let's look at the the nature of the early church and their contention for, for their contending for transformation the Bible says and they continued say continued that's the key that's the key starting is not the key continuing is the key did you hear what I said starting is not the key continuing is the key the real power of transformation is in your consistent contact with information not just once not just once in a while and they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and in fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayer they continued this was what they did often always in fact continued doctrine fellowship breaking of bread prayer doctrine fellowship breaking of bread prayer and they began to evolve into wonder walking dimensions of themselves show me a believer who has vowed to open up for transformation and i show you someone who will be a wonder in no distant time are we together we are victims of the things we know inaccurately or we do not know at all so we must trust god for grace to continue to allow the house of god to build our spiritual understanding methodically so until we become people of stature and maturity may that be our testimony in jesus name Amen. number three very quickly a quick recap three levels of deliverance number one casting out the spirit influences number two deliverance through transformation and that by the word of god are you ready for number three number three is called the discipline of conformity please write it down the discipline of conformity conformity is spelled c-o-n-f-o-r-m-i-t-y conformity another word for conformity is compliance with standards the discipline of complying with standards the discipline of adherence to scriptural instructions the discipline of having respect for the principles of god this is the last level of deliverance unfortunately most believers have not been taught that they have an active role to play in conforming to the terms that keep them in victory the discipline of conformity please underline the word discipline and underline the word conformity the discipline of conformity again what does conformity mean compliance with standards you conform to the degree to which you comply with standards adherence to scriptural instructions having respect for the principles of the kingdom is called conformity so you you need to be disciplined to adhere to the principles that guarantee your victory over demons and over whatever it is the powers of darkness now please look up to engage this discipline of conformity there are two things you need number one is called the enabling grace of God write it down you cannot conform by the strength of the flesh you need what we call the enabling grace I've taught you here that grace has dimensions is that true there is the saving grace but there is the enabling grace the grace that empowers you you do the doing but the strength is not from you enabling grace Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13 popular scripture here's what it says I can do all things how many things all things through Christ which strengthened me I can do all things it is not by my strength I will do the doing but the strengthening comes from Christ so you need for you to be able to sustain the discipline to conform and adhere to the principles 
that keep you in victory you need the enabling grace of god number two you need your will the union between the enabling grace of god and your will is what empowers you to conform your will your will your will very important are we together philippians chapter 3 let's look at verse 12 we'll read down to 16 very quickly not as though i had already attained either were already perfect he says but i follow after if that i may apprehend that for which i am apprehended of christ jesus we're reading to 16. next verse now brethren he says i count myself to i count not myself to have apprehended but this one thing i do forgetting the things that are behind that's an act of the will and reaching forth unto the things that are before next verse 14 i press say i press it's an act of the will i press towards the mark for the price of the high calling in jesus 15 he says let us therefore as many as be perfect be thus minded and if anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. The last verse, it says, Nevertheless, whereunto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. What rule? Pressing. Let us mind the same thing. Say, I press. Let me tell you this. There are many be believers who do not know that they have an active role to conform to take advantage of the enabling grace in union with your will for instance the bible says blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly is it in your bible nor stand in the way of sinners nor sit in the seat of the scornful when you are aware of that being aware does not immune you you must now obtain grace to create systems that will bring you in compliance to that truth is somebody learning now yes the discipline of conformity may involve you having to separate yourself from negative relationships that you have had somebody is calling you all the time oh let's go to the club let's go to this and you find out that most of what is happening there is completely antichrist it is within your power to pay that price as a token of your determination to be free from the influence of demons the discipline of conformity if the spirit of poverty has been ravaging you and the channel through which it, find, it found access to your life is financial carelessness when you now learn the, the principles of the kingdom and you learn that frugality and management is one of the ways to increase you begin to create systems are you seeing now by yourself systems that tame financial carelessness from your life the discipline of conformity no matter how many gallons of oil or communion you take and swallow even if you you take one whole jar provided you don't open up yourself to be disciplined and to confirm to conform yourself to adherence to the principles of the kingdom i guarantee you satan will return this is why you see a lot of people angry with preachers as though they are the ones who are not powerful now you go back and check nothing has changed their lifestyles have not changed their speaking has not changed that there is no discipline around their life and yet they wonder why all the prophetic words don't happen this charge i give unto you timothy that you wore a good warfare with the prophecy that has been given to you say discipline please shout it one more time Deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 and 2. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do. Who does the doing? All his commandments which I commanded this day, that the Lord thy God shall set thee high above all the nations of the earth. Verse 2. He says, all these blessings shall come upon you. Who is the you? Not the you that has had. 
the you that has disciplined yourself to walk in keeping with the terms joshua chapter 1 and verse 8 many people confess it but it has never happened in their life do you know why because there is indiscipline we do not conform to the terms this book of the law he says shall not depart from out of thy mouth thou shalt meditate during day and night that thou mayest observe to do observe to do all that is written therein for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous and thou shalt have good success can i tell you this i thank god for the grace of god that was given to me but look at my notes These are the notes that, that I use for preparing this sermon. You can see it was not typed, handwritten. Say discipline. Say conformity. My sitting down and burning the midnight candle is my participatory activity with the Holy Ghost to see to it that the prophecy for the deliverance and the emancipation of God's people will happen. I can fold my arm and say, God, are you not the creator of the ends of the earth? and not study i submit to you by god you will be shocked at how many researches how many materials this is not a new subject to me but i studied afresh again for one series say discipline please shout it say discipline you see many people many people in church are not told this aspect and we superstitiously believe that just because the victory has been won in christ it will just come automatically like that no when you pray for safety, you drive your car to where you need to go. You don't pray for safety and say, Lord, take me there and lie down. You get up, you dress and act of your will. You drive knowing that there is grace backing you, but you still drive. Lord, as I'm traveling for these eight hours, go with me. Amen. You believe, but for eight hours, it's not the hand of the Holy Ghost that will be on that steering. It's going to be your hand. Enduring, somebody who want to hit you, you will still and it's you that will go there the union between your diligence your discipline and the grace of god is what powers results please are we learning it was god's servant bishop david Oedipo, who said behind everything that walks there is somebody walking it any christianity he said that makes god absolutely responsible for the outcome of your life is an irresponsible christianity i agree i agree the Holy Ghost can use you, can use your faculties to pray, but you must be alive and ready to engage with him. Are we learning now? So these are the three biblical levels of deliverance. Let's do a quick recap. Number one, casting out the spirit influences. Never forget this. The first level that is usually in most cases instantaneous just knowing what to do and engaging it with authority brings to end all of their onslaughts but the second step is deliverance through transformation and that will take a while you have to sit with the word of god until it cultures your spiritual understanding again and then number three the grace the union of the enabling grace together with your will to now walk in keeping with the truths there believe me i tell you this by the authority of scripture anybody who walks by this this tripartite approach to deliverance indeed will experience unquestionable liberty most believers will only choose the first because it looks like the most charismatic and the most physical of the three and i do not downplay it i've told you that when spirits leave sometimes most times instantaneously you can begin to see results but don't be carried away by the result satan is a determined fellow we learned that from part one he left jesus for a season he goes back to re-strategize and returns back in hope that you will not do two and three hallelujah are you blessed now i have to teach you this please write it down how do you conform i've spoken about conform, uh, conforming and adhering but i have to structure it to teach you how do you conform 
when we talk about conformity we're talking of adherence what are the ways i need to teach you primarily there are two channels for your conforming to the word of god and the ways of god number one your words your words your speakings your words you conform by the discipline of speaking right because your words carry power proverbs 18 20 21 proverbs 18 20 21 very quickly a man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth and with the increase of his lips he shall be filled are you seeing it now that your belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of your mouth and then with the increase of your lips you will be filled read 21 popular scripture death and life are in the power of the tongue it says they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof you are ready to conform you must begin to speak like a child of god with the heart man believes unto righteousness with the mouth confession homologio repeats as god has said with the mouth confession is made unto salvation you must speak right believers speak carelessly we don't care we say all kinds of things we call death to our lives we call defeat to our lives we call failure to our lives and we say it does not matter say not before an angel i made a mistake number two the second way you conform is through your decisions this is a very major tool for conformity your decisions your choices and your decisions write this down please i learned this years ago from dr mike Murdoch. decisions decide destiny decisions more than your conditions decide your destiny hallelujah it was jim ron of blessed memory who said no matter what changes around you if you do not change nothing will change the political party can change the economic tide can change your age can change every other thing can change but if you do not change you are the principal factor responsible for your growth if you change and everything remains the same you will still win if you remain the way you are and everything changes you will still have the same result under any condition if you are the same your result will be the same the most important component in your success is not what you do is who you become I've taught you here becoming is greater than doing you only do when you have become but the people that do know their God knowledge they shall be becoming they shall do most people focus on doing if the old mindset is what is doing something new you will still have the old result it has to take the new mindset to do something else are we together your decisions deuteronomy chapter 30 from verse 15 very quickly deuteronomy chapter 30 from verse 15 see i have said before you koinonia this day life and good death and evil reading to 20 16 now in that i commanded in that I commanded thee this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, that thou mayest live, do you see it there, and multiply, and the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it. Next verse, 17 now. Give us 17. But if thine heart turn away, so that thou will not hear but shall be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them uh -huh. i denounce to you this day that ye shall surely perish 
and that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land whither thou passest over Jordan to go in and possess it. Now verse 19, I call on heaven and earth to record as witnesses this day that I have set before you koinonia, life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, use your will, choose life. Choose life by choosing your words. Choose life by making quality decisions that thou and thy seed may live. Are we together? That thou mayest love the Lord thy God, that thou mayest obey his voice, that thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is thy life, and the length of thy days thou mayest dwell, that thou mayest dwell in the land that the Lord swear unto your fathers, to Abraham, and so on and so forth. He said, choose life. Write this down, please as we wrap up this session so that we'll get quickly to the weapons of victory the quality of your choices and decisions the quality of your choices and decisions will always be a reflection of your belief systems the quality of your choices and decisions will always be a reflection of your belief systems that means the kind of information that has shaped your mindset. The quality of your choices and decisions will always be a reflection of your belief systems. So if your choices and your decisions are negative and demon attracting, you need to review the information that shapes your understanding and your paradigm, your perceptions and your beliefs then you can now make quality decisions that honor your now superior mindset most believers do not contend for transformation and so in as much as they make decisions they find out that most of their decisions are decisions that lead to defeat remember i have taught you here that you do not choose consequences you make decisions and the decisions themselves have attached to them already consequences The discipline to apply and live by the truth you found is the last step to deliverance. The discipline to apply and live by the truth you have found is the last step to complete deliverance. The discipline to apply and live by the truth you have found is the last step to complete deliverance. John 13, 7. John 13, 7. Jesus. Oh dear. 17, 13, 17. Now that ye know these things, happy are you, it says, if you do them. Knowing it is not enough. Now that ye know these things, if ye know these things, King James says, happy are you if you do them. Pray in the spirit in one minute as we go to the last subtopic. This will lead us into the communion and then the prayer. Shabaromska di la kabaria da kosia da balaj. So we bow as we enter the throne room and we cast ourselves down at your feet. You are holy, thou art holy, there is none like in your presence that is where we must be in your presence that is where we must be hallelujah listen after seasons of intense demonic oppressions in my own life even though I was already in ministry I knew that I had to study these things sincerely 
I didn't want to stand and deceive God's people in confusion. And it led me to begin to study what I'm about to teach you now. I knew that nothing was wrong with the integrity of God's word. And I had to admit painfully so that there was something I did not know. Can I tell you, if it fails, it is never with God. If it fails, it is never with God. There is something you do not understand. And the quicker you come to that realization, the better and the easier and the safer for you. For many people, it's going to take them a long time to know that God is still love and that his word is still dependable in spite of the plethora of defeats we may be having in our lives. Let God be true and all men liars. Weapons of victory. In this kingdom, we have weapons that help us establish the victory that is in Christ. Haven't taught you the three levels of deliverance, casting out the spirit influences, transformation by the word of God, and then the discipline of adherence or conformity. Now I want to teach you the weapons that have been given to the believer to guard your victory and to establish your victory. The first level of these weapons is in Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 10. As a subtopic, please write, the whole armor of God. The Bible shows us that the believer can be, can dress like a warrior with the whole armor of God. And that the purpose of the whole armor of God is so that you can stand against the wiles or the schemings of the devil. Are we learning the whole armor of God? I will run through it very quickly. Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles or the schemings of the devil. Right? It says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So this is the information that supports your putting the whole armor of God. You put the whole armor of God knowing this, that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. 13. Now, it says, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, he repeats, that ye may be able to withstand. Say withstand. In the evil day, and haven't done all to stand. Now the weapons. Stand therefore. There are seven of them as revealed here. Weapon number one is called truth. Truth. I will just list them and then explain them briefly. Your loins guard about with truth. The first weapon that helps you stand against the wiles of the devil is truth. Number two, the breastplate of righteousness. Verse 15. Number three, your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. The preparation of the gospel of peace. Number four, above all he says, taking the shield, not just faith, the shield of faith. Wherewith ye shall be able to quench how many? All the fiery darts of the wicked. 17. And take the helmet of salvation. That is number three. Okay, number five. Take the helmet of salvation. And then number six. The sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Are you seeing now? He's describing the things that you must dress yourself with to be immune against the wiles of the devil. Hmm. I wonder how Paul had his revelations. Did he see a vision of a man dressed like this? And watching where unto, this is the seventh now, praying always. Most times when we read it, we stop at six. No, it is seven. Prayer is the seventh. Praying always consistently with all prayer, meaning there are different kinds of prayer. He's saying when it has to do with your defense, bring all of them on board. 
praying in the spirit, supplications, petitions, add all of them. And it says, watching where unto with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Now, let me explain to you, King James, I submit to you, that when it has to do with the whole armor of God, King James does not do the kind of justice that we need in understanding this. If you read this just in King James, you may not have the best expression. Let's go to Amplified. We'll jump very quickly and then we'll examine the whole armor of God. Same scripture Amplified, please. Very quickly, Ephesians chapter 6 from verse... Let's start from verse 11. Put on the whole armor of God, the armor of a heavy armed soldier, which God supplies, that you may be able to successfully stand against all the strategies and the deceits of the devil. 12. For we are not wrestling. Let's go to 13 for sake of time. Therefore, put on God's complete armor, that you may be able to resist and stand your ground on the evil day of danger, and having done all that the crisis demands to stand firmly in your place. Are you ready? Let's see what Amplify says. Stand therefore on your ground, having tightened the belt of truth around your loins. So it starts with truth. And then number two, it says, uh, okay, well, it says, and having put on the breastplate of integrity, and moral rectitude and right standing with God. This is him teaching now what that righteousness means. Are we together? Next verse. Let's read very quickly. And having shod your feet in preparation to face the enemy with a firm-footed stability and promptness and the readiness produced by the good news of the gospel of peace. 16 lift up over all the covering the shield of saving faith upon which you can quench all the flaming missiles of the wicked one 17 it says and take the helmet of salvation and the sword that the spirit wields which is the word of god 18 it says pray at all times on every occasion in every season in the spirit now let me list for you what the full armor of god really means I've searched this in at least 12 or 13 translations and also on a few lexicons. Number one is truth. Integrity and moral courage is what the Bible refers to as truth. Number two, what he calls the breastplate of righteousness is actually an upright heart. An upright heart is what he calls the breastplate of righteousness. Number three, preparation of the gospel of peace is the third weapon do you know what this means he's saying carry with you an awareness that whilst you are ready to preach the gospel there is an immunity that follows you daniel chapter 12 and verse 3 very quickly to buttress on that point daniel 12 and verse 3 the bible says and they that be wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forevermore the star is far in the heavens it is not threatened by anything that happens on earth and he says when you are your feet is shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace derive an understanding that because your heart is stayed on the gospel there is an immunity that you enjoy are we together number four the shield of faith faith like a shield a system of defense number five he calls it the helmet of salvation do you know what this means notice that a helmet protects your head and if you go to an engineering site or you go to battle it seems to me like among the many things you cover they watch your head very carefully and he says what covers your head is the helmet of salvation that means there is an understanding of salvation especially your oneness with christ and your positional advantage these dual revelations that come on account of salvation must protect you the helmet of salvation you draw your strength like Ephesians 6.10 Amplified says, from your union with him. 
the awareness that I am one with Christ the awareness that I've been exalted your oneness with Christ and your positional advantage as a result of salvation it can cover your head and give you victory and then the sword of the spirit which clearly is the word of God and finally consistent prayer now let me tell you this this is very powerful because when you truly engage these seven arsenals the Bible calls it the whole armor of God do you know what this means this is these are the forces that work in synergy to maintain your victory now notice that the whole armor of God does not necessarily establish and manifest your victory but it maintains it the assignment of the whole armor is maintenance because you use it to stand that means you stand maintaining what has been manifest I will be teaching you the, the forces that establish and manifest the assignment of the whole armor is that when these forces have worked for you and the victory has now come you engage them as maintenance systems the whole armor of God I wrote here are largely preventive strategies that help the believer maintain his or her victory they are preventive strategies they help you maintain your victory in Christ an upright heart the shield of faith the consciousness of your salvation the awareness of the immunity that follows you as you preach the gospel all of these things are maintenance spiritual maintenance strategies that means for one who has obtained victory in experience you engage these things to maintain your victory having an upright heart alone an upright heart you know what an upright heart is a heart without guile that alone is a powerful maintenance system because when you pile things like bitterness envy anger the devil will march like a warrior and enter your life these are maintenance systems but let's deal with the weapons that establish and manifest the victory as we wrap up hallelujah you have won the victory hallelujah you have won it all for me death could not hold you down you are the reason king Seated in majesty, you are the reason, King. Hallelujah. That will be your song. You have won my victory. Hallelujah. Listen, I still remember it today, even though it's many years ago, the day I found this, it was in the night, I remember, I ran, I ran to my room, God is my witness, I stood in front of my room and I said, Satan, with this that I know, I will not even drive you, you are welcome, from that day, light is powerful John 1 5 says the light shineth brothers and sisters I want to hand you by the spirit weapons tonight that fortify you you will stand and dare the gates of darkness with audacity that is unrepentant away with that threat that after exalting Jesus something will boomerang back no not when you have this can i tell you when people try to fight terrorists sometimes they hide 
and they mask themselves so that the terrorists don't see them and attack them but when soldiers and the police fight when they are parading terrorists they don't cover their face because they have the system to reproduce it again you never see them parading even if they are the capon they will tell you these are the guys terrorizing and the person saying it has children and he does not cover himself because he's surrounded by an intelligence system that immunes him you will never see the president of america wearing helmets but you try to touch him you don't see him cover himself with anything he can even be flying t-shirts and taking coffee you just try to kill him then you will know why it's called a superpower Please sit down. I want you to be sensitive. We're wrapping up. I thank the Lord for his presence. I thank the Lord. Ah. Where would I be if you left me now? Where would I be? If you left Thank you for your patience. Where would I be? You Until I came to that understanding, it took a while for you were patient with me. Weapon number one, the word of God. Write it down. There are three weapons that eternally establish and manifest the victory over Satan. I don't care what cause. I don't care what charm. These are the weapons. Number one is the word of God. Hebrews chapter one and verse three. Please let's run. Hebrews 1 3. Who being the brightness of his glory, he says, the express image of his person, upholding all things by the word of his power. Another version says he upholds all things by his powerful word. That means the word of God literally upholds all things. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse 4. We'll run through these scriptures. My apologies to be rushing so that we'll finish everything and yet do justice to all that we need to do tonight. Where the word of a king is, except that person is not a king. The word of a slave may have doubt, but where the word of a king is, he says there is power. But the second part is what I like. Who may say unto him, what are you doing? That when a king speaks, who stands to say, I'm not sure who can stand against the lord no one can no one will who can stand who can stand against our king no one can no one can no one will oh Victory belongs to him. Oh, 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 oh. Victory belongs. Victory belongs to him. Where the word of a king is. So every time you hear the word, verify who spoke. Where the word of a king is, there is. Isaiah 55 verse 11 please sit down Isaiah 55 verse 11 we're examining the power of the word so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth it says it shall not return to me void but it shall accomplish that which I please and shall prosper in the thing where to I sent it Psalms 107 and verse 20 please write psalms 107 verse 20 the bible never said he gave his word he sent it 
when you send a messenger as a seed as a king it does not disobey he sent his word and that word will remain and keep hovering around until it heals until it delivers from destruction then it goes back like a faithful messenger i have finished he sends forth his word mark 16 20 mark 16 20 and they went forth and preached everywhere the lord walking with them and confirming the word write this the word of god activates the power of god the power of god is like is like a nuclear a nuclear missile but the word of god is that code that activates it as powerful as the power of god is it remains barren until the word of god comes listen to me very carefully in first john chapter 2 first john 2 please hurry up media first john 2 from verse 12 first john 2 and then verse 12 i write these things to you little children he said because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake 13 i write these things to you fathers because ye have known him from the beginning i write to you young men because you have overcome the wicked one i write to you little children because ye have known the father 14 it says i have written to you fathers because you have known him that is from the beginning and then i have written unto you young men because you are strong and the word of god abideth in you this is the source of your strength young men you are strong but your strong your strength is derived from the word of god the word of god contains the will of god do not forget the word of god contains the will of god and then i have taught you that the word of god defines the boundary of god's commitment to the believer that when god relates with the believer the jurisdiction of that relationship is the word of god one last scripture first john chapter 5 and verse 14. this is the confidence that i have in you whenever i call you you will answer me this is the confidence that i have in you whenever i call you you will answer me listen and this is the confidence we have in him that if we ask anything according to his word which is a capture of his will the bible says he heareth us 15 and if we know that he hear us whatsoever we ask we know that we have our petitions that we desired of him that means when you approach the things of the spirit and that includes the matters of warfare and demons your confidence is based on the fact that the basis of your relating with this all-powerful God is his word. And he has bound by covenant that provided it is a provision that his word allows, he will not say no to. The word of God, weapon number two. The name of Jesus. weapon number two the name of jesus hmm. mark 16 17. and these signs shall follow them that believe whatever the signs are they will only happen in my name there are numerous signs but all those signs together only happen in my name the name of a man is a representation of his office it's not just a means of identification 
when you call people by names number one it identifies them but number two it describes the extent of their specialty when you say doctor this person why do you need to mention that because in that we already know that this man has studied and he has gone that far are we together yes when you say somebody is ambassador this his excellency honorable senator why do we add those things those are attempts to describe competence those are attempts to describe the vastness of ability in my name means as touching my office there are times that when people write certain things they are not really interested in what was written they want to see the letter headed paper what name is that letter you, somebody can write something and just give you a letter headed paper and not even write the he may not even spell correctly please attend to him signed the letter headed paper on that table becomes a guarantee for your favor because of the office that brought you can i tell you this listen carefully when jesus died and resurrected and was exalted the bible says an office was given to him we call it a name and that that office was so constructed that nothing the same way joseph was exalted and pharaoh said i am pharaoh and in nothing will it be hindered you would only be second based on the ranking of the palace but in terms of administration pharaoh said don't ask me anything that has to do with the administration of egypt come to pharaoh to joseph so jesus has been exalted in john 14 and verse 13 to 14 why am i teaching you this because that is the name that will bring you a very permanent victory tonight john 14 13 and 14 and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name take note in my name there does not just mean chanting the alphabet j-e-s-u-s -S, uh -uh. with the consciousness of my office that i will do that the father may be glorified in the son verse 14 if ye shall ask anything in my name I shall do it hallelujah with the little grace and honor that God has given some of us we've had the privilege of using the honor of this office even to open doors for others there are people that have just written some things on paper please sir help this person with my signature and as limited as we are as human beings, you will be amazed at the doors that that signature opens. The person carrying it may not deserve it, but he's not going on his own. There is an office. Are we together? If the president minutes on you and says, look for a job for him, with all this unemployment noise, look for a job. The person who, looks, who does not look for that job will most likely be the one to leave that job for you. So the person knows there is pressure on the person executing it. Even if it means creating another committee to put you there. So, he gave us his name. You know what that means? He gave us his office. And said function. He said, listen, let me warn you. Satan will not respect you because of you. Make sure that every time you function, walk within the consciousness of this office this office most believers call j-e-s-u-s -E and yet they are not walking in the name to walk in the name does not mean to recite it we call j-e-s-u-s -E so that the nations will know that the one we are talking about who is lord and christ is jesus the son of the living god but the name is not jesus the name is his lordship you see i have seen the power of names our worship team people will sing it all the time there are thrones there are names there are all kinds of things it is true seated in this place koinonia is a collection of extremely successful people by the grace of god and by the privilege of leadership i know some of the people seated here and outside and around connected to this ministry i know the kind of power that their offices provide 
there are people when they like you you will never go to the embassy again to stand for visa human beings it doesn't matter whether the embassy is locked you will still enter without entering names now listen carefully there are people when they love you their names become a receipt you will pay for anything anywhere credited to the name there are times that admission will be over but certain names will extend the date there are hospitals when you go to you can go in a name and you will not pay one naira the name paid for it listen when he says in my name that means you must have the consciousness of how far and how exalted this name is the name of a governor will not solve national issues because he's a governor the jurisdiction his name as governor already created the boundary of his power are we together he cannot another governor cannot go to another state and impose things but the president as the commander-in-chief within that 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 region a monarch can stand and make decisions on behalf of his territory there can be a land dispute and they take it to the monarch and he can look at it and say you know what i decide i decide look at judges magistrate judges they literally can choose whether a human being should live or die can you imagine that somebody can come it does not matter except god helps him by mercy but naturally speaking a judge can actually sit down and in five minutes reduce somebody's lifetime to one more day names you can sit in a position and give a verdict and say for the rest of your life you will spend it in prison and hits that thing and that's the end of it any other discussion you discuss in prison when jesus gave us his name find out what the name did before he died find out what you see the name he gave us is not the one that was used when he was walking on earth is the name that was given after the coronation was over and he gave us that office listen carefully if say for instance i have a wristwatch here and let's assume this wristwatch is say a security wristwatch that whoever wears this wristwatch will be treated like joshua selman are we together now if i remove this wristwatch and i give someone when the person wears that wristwatch there are security doors is that true come on technology all you need to do is use your palms or use something like this so i have this watch connected and it opens the security door and someone else wears it even if it's a baby and the baby plays around the door the door does not know the difference between the baby and the owner whoever is the wearer of that security mechanism the door was designed to open for him so when jesus walked upon the earth he used his name he sent the disciples that means listen carefully when you stand in the name of jesus exactly what would have happened if jesus were there is what should happen now that you are there in his name someone may have a parcel for me and say joshua selman i have this for you and i can say sorry i may not be able to come but i'm going to send someone if i send that one the person will collect the parcel is that true there are politicians who send people to represent them and when you are quoting them you will say the governor said this even though the governor was not there if the person makes a mistake of donating something that he did not discuss with the governor as far as the state is concerned they will say governor you donated 50 million where's our money he will have to pay and go and flog it out with whoever misrepresented him but as far as the state is concerned governor if you are a man of integrity you must bring that money so when you stand and look at demons by age they are older than you by experience from a human standpoint they have it more than you but you call on a name i told you that god sits on an altar that that covenant of his name is not an emotional thing 
it has nothing to do whether your voice is sounding nice or not it has nothing to do whether you are wearing jean trouser or you are wearing suit once you invoke that office the power behind that office is released immediately the name of Jesus someone shout the name of Jesus I know what the name of Jesus is able to do that office Ephesians 1 21 tells us he has been exalted Ephesians 1 21 far above principality these are offices too far above powers offices far above might and dominion and every other office not only in this world but in the world that is to come You can arrange thrones, you can arrange names, but none will come and stand before the name of Jesus. Can I tell you this? When you stand and rebuke demon spirits just because you are a Christian, you will be surprised how they will look at you and not even respond to you, but you come by the name. Blessed is he who comes in the name. This is the reason why we stand with authority and say in the name of Jesus, Satan, demons, yokes, we command you, go. And we expect compliance because the power that backs us, my name does not carry much power as a human being. There are many other people carrying my name, but there's no other person who sits in that office. Christ himself sits alone and he's now brought us to be partakers of that name. Say, I am a partaker of the name. Listen, you are not just a partaker of the, of, of the nature. You are also a partaker of the office. Seated with Christ, it is called. Number three. Number three. The last is called the power or the blood. The blood. Oh dear. I feel so sad, eh? I wish I had the time to pieces this thing for you. The blood. But let's see what we can do. We're ready for the communion now. We'll pray. Somebody is 10 or 15 minutes left to wave something that 100 years, 100 years, 50 years could not wait. I'm not entertaining you. Believe me. The accuser of the brethren finds a way To come before the holy judge You know the song? Points a finger at the faults And failings of the saints Won't you judge them now? But I have an advocate in heaven's courts My redeemer and the high priest of my soul Jesus Christ the Lamb The Holy Lamb of God Nathaniel Bassi's song Very, very powerful song Eternal saving blood I don't have to cry For you have paid the price Sit down Let me teach you something about blood Leviticus chapter 17 and verse 11 For the life of the flesh is in the blood what is in blood life say life what when you hold your atm what is in your atm you see that now there is something that is captured in your atm are we together now yes the blood of anything carries the life of that thing 
not just the blood of Jesus the blood of a goat is where the life of a goat flows the blood of a human is where his human life flows there is a relationship between blood and life blood represents life write it down please blood represents life this is the first quick information i want you to know about blood and this life is in levels this life that is in the blood is in levels now the second thing i want you to know about blood from scripture blood has always been used as a ransom write the word ransom very powerful word ransom r a n s o m you know what a ransom is look up a ransom is the payment you make to release someone in captivity when they kidnap someone unfortunately like we have around our region the terrorists or kidnappers for whatever reason they demand a ransom that money that purchasing power that you bring to give them then they release the captive is found in blood so blood is currency in the realm of the spirit the same way naira and cobo and dollars and pounds are in the physical realm naira is actually an instrument of settlement and purchase in the realm of the spirit that you can use blood like you use money to buy things is called redemption when you redeem a thing you buy it back number one when you redeem a thing to redeem means to compensate for a default the idea of redemption talks of compensation a system of compensation for a default to redeem also means to regain possession to regain possession so blood has the purchasing power blood has the power of appeasal it can bring to an end contentions why am i teaching you about the blood before we take the communion proverbs chapter 26 and verse 2 is a very powerful and profound spiritual law please look up and read it as loud as you can ready one to go as the bird by wandering a swallow so a cause causeless shall not stand do you know what this means that means anytime a cause anytime any kind of demonic thing comes if there is no legal basis it will not work so the fact that it works it means that there is a cause because a curse causeless shall not stand now hear me as powerful as the name of jesus is when it has to do with dealing with matters of legalities in the spirit listen very carefully it is true that the word of god is powerful it is true that the name is powerful but there is a legal system in the realm of the spirit i told you here that ransom means the payment to bring a pizza because of a default when man fell we willingly gave our authority we willingly gave our lives we willingly submitted ourselves to the influence of satan he became the god of this world even the prince of the power of the air the spirit that now walks in the sons of disobedience now i have taught you in, in the, the previous series that many of these our precious forefathers and many of in ignorance many of them legitimately invited satan and through medium and priests and whatever it is they entered covenants seeking assistance from the realm of the spirit knowing that a body without a spirit is dead because they did not know the one true god satan masquerading as god 
came and deceived them and most of them willingly handed over i hope you know i taught you last week the blood in you now i hope you know that your blood is older than you except you don't believe biology because it was because of that blood that you came the blood was already there for you to have arrived is that true without that blood you would not be born by one man's sin and then through the means of reproduction by blood the sin nature continued to multiply and you know that the blood from a child medical doctors teach us that it comes from the man that was why God did not allow any man play the fatherly role of Jesus the Holy Ghost himself there was no problem having an earthly woman since the blood comes from man if a man participated in the birth of Jesus he would be born as sin immediately he would not even need any communion because he's already sin so he came as the sinless one are we together now that is the qualification that the kind of appeasal that the yokes and the causes and the covenants demand based on the legal system of heaven it will require blood that did not come from a human male and that is impossible based on the law of reproduction so the holy spirit came and played that fatherly role jesus came although with a human body but not blood from a mortal man understand this very carefully i'm building for you the case why the blood of jesus is so precious so that is god's blood is that true because <laughs> When Jesus Christ, listen carefully, I told you that blood has a measure of purchasing power. When Jesus Christ gave his blood, because his blood is a representation of his life, when he gave that life, he was sinless. That means he was not deserving of judgment. Are we together now? And watch the wisdom even though it was god that allowed jesus to die but jesus made sure that satan played a role in his dying why because somebody is about to be blamed and when satan was moving through men he was happy doing what he was doing to kill jesus of course satan would not kill him. you know what i mean to participate in the flesh in crucifying him when you kill an innocent man Listen carefully. When you kill an innocent man, according to the law of scripture, the blood of that man starts crying. And when it cries, God will hear. And whatever the blood says to do, it will be done. Cain and Abel. Is that true? Abel was dead, but his blood cried. Now, when Satan did all that he did, the blood of Jesus started crying. And instead of crying to say, avenge me, he says, no, as a reward for killing an innocent man, release the one who is guilty. You see now. Release the one who is guilty. So, every time Satan stands before you and claims that it is true, that your fathers worship idols and based on legal grounds you should not experience breakthrough you should experience barrenness you tell him you are right if i'm the only one who is going to fight this case but i have an advocate are we together now this is very powerful the blood of jesus is the legal system that breaks every hold every hold of covenants and ordinances that speak against the saints how does that happen by reminding satan that if it was just for the guiltless to become guilty then it is just for the guilty to become guiltless very simple equation you have to understand this about blood the blood of jesus speaks it speaks mercy for the saints it speaks release for the saints but it speaks judgment for satan and his cohorts and now watch this 
the blood of Jesus is even an overpayment because whatever it is that gave the devil legal access every blood came by earthly stands whether animals or men but the blood of Jesus was not of an earthly origin are we together now so there is no bill that that blood cannot pay are we together how many of you are trusting God for financial breakthrough okay drop your hands you are going to understand what I'm teaching you now if Elon Musk or Bill Gates gives you access to his resources question relative to what he has and relative to your bills will it become a concern again are we together probably what you will spend in a day is what summarizes your entire bills so that is an overpayment now when you hold that if anybody looks at you and say I remember you owed me five years will you run no what is there is sufficient you can even tell me I can I can bless you and still punish you and forgive you and bless you because of what I have now listen listen to me the blood of Jesus is not just sufficient to pay for sin it is more than sufficient are we together now and then instead of speaking judgment to us it now speaks mercy and the blood of Jesus is the basis for the ministry of mercy how do you apply the blood listen very carefully when Satan who is the accuser of the brethren now comes as his culture is to accuse you of anything and then to make demands that on legal basis what was agreed by covenants of fathers and witchcraft should happen to you when you invoke the blood what happens is you disappear in the spirit from that scene and Jesus is the one who stands there now when Jesus stands there Satan says it's not you I'm talking to this is the person I'm talking to but he now says the person has invited me I gave him authorization to invite me what then is your accusation against me and he remembers that there is no accusation that he could bring before Jesus remember when Jesus stood before Pontius Pilate it was an adumbration of man they tried to bring accusations but nothing could stand listen believers if you do not understand the power of the blood there cannot be redemption Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 7 as we prepare to take the communion and pray the Bible says we have redemption Ephesians 1 7 we have redemption I told you what it means to redeem to redeem means to buy back to reclaim ownership and that happened through his blood even the forgiveness of sins according to the riches the wealth of his grace so I can stand before that demon spirit and say it is true that based on the ordinances of the fathers I deserve to live a defeated life but I'm standing here it is by the blood and the moment I invoke the blood the case is not about me again the case is about Jesus and the moment Jesus shows up there is absolutely no accusation as simple as what I'm saying is Satan dreads your knowledge of this do you know why because you will be learning that the blood does not speak empty there is a system of compliance to what the blood says when the blood says you are not guilty it does not stop there there is a system that galvanizes all the forces in heaven to make sure that what the blood has said concerning you remains true over your life the blood of Jesus is powerful this is what I found when I found this I ran and I stood I say you may have legal access I don't even know who my forefathers are I don't know what they worshiped I only had they worship idols they worshiped all kinds of things but now I have come and I come by the blood I come by the blood I come by the blood when Satan looks for me he does not find me 
but he will find Jesus there and Jesus will ask him what are you looking for and he says I'm looking for a young man connected to a lineage that should authorize failure and he says he's no more here that person died didn't you see him I have been crucified with Christ listen can I tell you this the blood is proof that Jesus died is that true and when he died it was the appeasal because remember the last enemy to be destroyed is death that means ultimately satan wants to get that dominion but his primary assignment is after getting every other thing he kills you the blood proves that jesus died but the blood proves that you died too do you know what that means when satan comes to accuse you and you bring the blood that means the blood says this case has been judged already why are you revisiting a case that has been judged the criminal who offended you has actually died but it's just that you are not the one who died the person who died gave you the blood as evidence to say the price has been paid listen if you owe somebody and the person says you owe me one million and i carry my one million and give you and you give the person did you pay for it yes it may not be your money but as far as payment is done if the person comes to accuse you and says it is not your money i know you don't have money it is my responsibility to now defend you who gave you the money is not the issue payment was made this is the receipt so the blood is proof that somebody died and hear me hear me every time you see death and blood it proves that it was not a normal blood in a normal death he was killed people in intelligence come and when they investigate and they see dead body the moment they see blood is most likely murder someone killed him a normal death will not easily bring blood out the blood of Jesus is not just proof that he died it's proof he was killed the question is who killed him whoever killed him is the person who killed me too and so there is a serious case of accusation here I have been crucified with Christ when he died I died when that price was paid in him and through his blood this entire price was paid now Satan does not have any legitimate ground look this thing is so simple but it can keep you in bondage forever I need no other argument I need no other plea it is enough that Jesus died and that he died for me one more time i need no other argument i need no other plea it is enough that jesus died and that he died for me please lift up your communion If you don't have one please just wave it wave your hand and the ushers will reach you if there's anyone who does not have a communion like this all those who are following from their homes you can get a communion set anything at all bread wafers whatever it is we want to invoke this mystery of the blood very quickly and then I pray liberty in this kingdom is through the blood a compensation for our defaults to regain possession of us we are now his property John chapter 6 while standing everyone please very quickly John 6 from verse 48 I'll read two scriptures and we'll take the communion I'll speak over our lives and then we are done but not done with your testimonies it will just be beginning I am the bread of life next verse it says your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead this is the bread which cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die reading to 58 I am the living bread which came down from heaven if any man eat this bread he shall live forever and the bread that I will give is my flesh which I will give for the life of the world 
The Jews therefore strove among themselves saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man, Listen, And drink his blood, Ye have no life. Except you eat his flesh, And drink his blood, You have no life. Are we together? Whoso eateth my flesh, And drinketh my blood, Had eternal life, And I will raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. 46. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me and I in him. This in theology is called the doctrine of interpenetration. Is the mystery by which two people come into one. Is the same mystery that happens in marriage. When you say two have become one. That by the mystery of the communion, it reenacts your oneness. That anything that is not in Christ should not be found in you. It enforces that oneness. 57. As the living Father had sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me shall live by me. 58. This is the bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever one more scripture first corinthians chapter 11 from verse 23 first corinthians 11 23 for i have received of the lord he said paul is speaking now which i also delivered unto you that the lord jesus christ the same night which he was betrayed he took bread and when he had given thanks he break it and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. He says, do this, not when you are hungry. Do this, not when you think you need food. Do this with a consciousness that you are not only remembering me, you are remembering that sacrifice that I died for you. I paid that price for you. 25. He says, and after the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped saying this cup is the new testament in my blood do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me verse 26 for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup you do show that you have respect for the lord's death you invoke through this mystery the reality of the power that was released in his death and by that blood listen many people take communion in church just because they grew up knowing that is a sacrament to be honored this you see right now is just an ordinary drink that was made by a professional caterer this wafers here was made by someone else this does not have any power on its own
everything Christ paid for everything the blood of Jesus has released me from I declare that he who the Son sets free is free indeed and you begin to speak and release yourself and we pray are you ready for that lift it up please everyone father you gave us this as a practice of faith that as often as we take this with understanding we do this discerning your body father this is ordinary wafers and this is an ordinary drink but i pray in the name of jesus christ that the spirit of grace will rest upon this by reason of this communion oh god i pray that yokes and causes and covenants that have tied people down and will not let them rise sabotaging their liberty in the spirit i pray that as they take this let an end come to it now all the ordinances of the fathers in the name of jesus this is the blood that speaketh better things we have been redeemed by the blood we take this with understanding that this now is no longer an earthly substance that this is a representation of the blood of jesus and the bread which is jesus himself and i decree and declare in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit that we take this with understanding and let it begin to produce great miracles in our lives in jesus name i pray now i'll give you five minutes please just open gently when you take it just begin to pray you don't have to throw it please be patient ushers as soon as they take it just begin to pass the bucket so that they can put it and then you begin to blast in tongues in jesus name Begin to pray. Something is happening here now. Begin to pray. Something is happening right now. Just help those under the anointing. My God, something is happening here. Halande Zali Kaparakasko de la Tiaba. An end is coming right now. Atmosphere shift now. Chains be broke. Break now. Holy Spirit. Heaven open. I want you to shout this loud and clear. Just help those under the anointing. Say, Father, I decree and declare that every legal access Satan has over my life, over my destiny, I invoke the blood and I declare right now causes yokes activities of ancestry be broken forever lift your voice and begin to pray lift your voice and begin to pray lift your voice and begin to pray blotting out every handwriting 
and every ordinance someone is praying bring to an end don't fear the devil you have authority redeemed by the blood you have no legal hold over my life you have no legal hold the blood speaks the blood speaks the blood speaks you have no legal hold over my life the blood speaks E crocotto pacata precate balacato secata caprande ge barusa secatia e bracatosco tu prande ge baruschi atalacata Be patient we're almost done but pray this is a matter of your destiny Shadi ge te barakoski ata Hallelujah Say in the name of Jesus, covenants of delay, covenants of untimely death. Ah, I tell you, I sense, I sense such, such a strong anointing. We are still praying. Covenants of retrogression, covenants of failure. By the blood of Jesus, help them. I declare be broken now open your mouth and pray be broken ordinances of fathers tying down the destinies of God's people be broken be broken redeemed by the blood redeemed by the blood redeemed by the blood the ransom has been paid a pizza has been made. The Father is satisfied. Shabakata bakatos koto frente kete. Ekra kata barakatos koto frente kete lekatosia. Embra kapa katos koto prekete lekete bariakata. Shane kete shara katos koto frente kete balakata. hallelujah shout it very loud and clear say seasons of weeping seasons of shame seasons of embarrassment seasons of retrogression by the power of the blood come to an end in my life now lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray seasons of shame reproach embarrassment come to an end in the name of jesus come to an end in the name of jesus Come to an end. Come to an end. Palekata prakatos koto prakatashiata. Come to an end. Hallelujah. Now hear me. You are going to pray the prayer of recovery and restoration. Say in the name of Jesus. Everything that has left me that should not have left by the blood by the name by the word i call you back to my destiny open your mouth and begin to pray opportunities by the spirit of god relationships by the spirit of god resources by the spirit of god mantles by the spirit of god Harada bakata prande katos kati lakapa e prakatos koto prakatos kati malakata shaprekete bata restoration by the spirit of God restoration 
by the Spirit of God restoration by the Spirit of God restoration by the Spirit of God restoration by the Spirit of God restoration hallelujah hallelujah please don't be tired I know that I've stretched you a bit but I beseech you by the message of God please be patient and let's just finish this say after me in the name of Jesus the spirit of the waster listen listen your confessions matter there is the spirit of a waster it can waste life's resources say again in the name of Jesus the spirit of a waster the spirit of untimely death the spirit of infirmity I challenge you by the blood you have no hold over my life go 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 lift your voice and pray Go on timely death. The waster coming as ill health. The waster coming as disappointment in business. The waster, the Lord rebuke you. The spirit of the waster. The spirit of the waster. Makapranda katabarata, you are caused by the God of heaven. Hallelujah! Shout it after me, say in the name of Jesus, my place in life and destiny that has been hijacked by witchcraft and powers in the heavens. I decree and declare clear away for me lift your voice and pray my place in life my space in destiny i take my place in life i take my place in destiny never will it be said adam where are you i take my place E protosko to brandi gebalia, kapra kapara kotosko to brande gete balegetia. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Patterns and circles of negative occurrences by the blood of Jesus come to an end now. Open your mouth and pray. Patterns. It happened to your father. It happened to your mother. It happened to your elder brother. Now it's happening to you. Patterns. Cause it by the God of heaven. Negative cycles. Every two, two years, someone must die. Every six, six months, someone must die. Cause it by the God of heaven. Patterns. They don't stay in marriage. Patterns. They don't give birth to children. Cause it by the God of heaven. Please pray, please pray. Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus, I sanctify by the blood of Jesus and the word of God. I sanctify my dreams. I sanctify my visions. I sanctify my prophetic experiences. No more manipulations. No more wrong revelations. Open your mouth and pray. Pray, declare sanctification. The devil will not manipulate your dreams to confuse you. The devil will not manipulate you with visions, lying visions. Please pray, few more minutes. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Huh. This prayer you are about to pray, something will happen to you. Say in the name of Jesus. Every spirit taking advantage of my dreams and appearing as a male or a female or animals to molest me 
and manipulate me by the blood of the eternal covenant i curse you now open your mouth and pray please pray open your mouth and pray every spirit coming as a man that sleeps with you coming as a woman that sleeps with you coming as animals all kinds of demonic things curse them by the god of heaven Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now you have prayed. Let me do the praying for you. I want you to be sensitive. We have a few minutes. There is a heavy anointing here. Listen, I'm going to, as I mentioned that case, the moment you are part of it, the fire of God is coming upon you and bringing it to an end. Are we together? Now we have just about two, three minutes. When that happens, I want you to bring the people out very quickly. Ushers, we have to work together. Right now, I declare, anyone here who is a victim of causes, right now, at the count of three, any curse sitting on your head, apparatus, sitting on your destiny, causes that bring delay, causes that bring failure, causes at the count of three, as you shout Jesus let that fire come bring them out right now one two three shout Jesus Causes, be broken now Causes, please help them whether you are an usher or not help them for sake of time Causes, every cause powered by an altar standing to destroy you I curse you by the God of heaven Very quickly, bring them out. Curses. I'm arresting curses. Negative pronouncements. Hallelujah. Please quickly bring them. Now all of you listen to me, I'm praying. Right now, every altar connected to anyone apakanata sanika paratusia. Every altar connected to anyone's foundation that is powering negative patterns right now i'm telling you i'm seeing fire may that fire engulf that pattern now altars catch fire or oh, patash koteka bring them out altars catch fire catch fire catch fire catch fire catch fire by the power of the holy ghost Anatas katika tepa rakatos, eprakatos kotusa neka tepa lakatos yata, emprekati katia. I want to pray. Everyone's destiny here that has been exchanged in the realm of the spirit. You are living your life, but you know this is another man's script. By the power that raised Christ from the dead, I declare in the name of Jesus, be delivered now. Be delivered now. Hear me. Anybody who gave you anything or collected anything from you, knowingly or knowingly, and that became the token of witchcraft, every shrine where that thing is right now i stand by the apostolic and the prophetic i set it on fire now tokens and instruments of connection i set it on a pakatoskata i set it on fire now i set it on fire now help that woman please i set it on fire now listen listen to me we're wrapping up a kiss 
was meant to be a system to show love and intimacy but judas used the same kiss as a sign for betrayal a handshake that is supposed to be a system of joy can be a sign to the enemy this is the one to destroy i'm praying again whatever left you knowingly or unknowingly whatever you received knowingly or unknowingly that is being used as a token of manipulation i pray for you koinonia by the god who called me be delivered now be delivered now be delivered now hear me everyone who is in fraternity with darkness and because they are alive they sat on altars powering satan and not allowing people to move there are whole villages and territories they renew their life with young people and they remain there i call upon the god of heaven may the ground open and swallow them this moment help them please help them help them may the ground open apakato scatter may the ground open and swallow them now bring them out please may the ground open and swallow them now the spirit of poverty of lack and hardship all of you are graduates but no job everybody with masters phd yet nothing to write home about father let fire right now from heaven every altar that powers poverty and lack in the name of jesus be destroyed now be destroyed now hear me if there is anybody here under the sound of my voice that they have written your name and the date where you will die listen when you read the book of esther you will see that by divination a date was already put to attack the jews i pray for you that any spirit that has already signed in partnership with men and satan that on so 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 day you will die of accident or on so 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 day you will die of any demonic thing i i pray for you now may death leave you alone we are wrapping up hear me if you are a firstborn here in the name of jesus i pray for you the cause that tries to follow firstborns the ones who open the womb they are the ones who become the the chief victims i pray for you here by the power that raised christ from the dead if there is any altar stopping you from move, moving forward i command it right now at the count of three may fire come upon that altar one two three take that fire now take that fire now the cause of firstborns i curse you right now the cause of firstborns i capatas kotebata i curse you right now hear me if you are the first to rise beyond a certain level in your family you are the first to be lifted to that level i pray for you in the name of jesus the spirit that will want to fight you to bring back your family where they were in jesus name may that altar be destroyed now help them please may that altar be destroyed now two more prayers and we're done my goodness fire is burning in this place everything that has been tied in the realm of the spirit 
whether it's your favor your job your lifting your children your relationships in the name of jesus this moment by the power of the name the blood and the word i declare a release now i announce a prophetic jubilee now in the name of jesus christ final prayer please place your hand on your head prophetically your head is a sign of your glory you will be surprised at what will happen to you now I want to pray for you father you instructed that we do this I stand by the priestly the apostolic and the prophetic mantle and I pray over your people the head of a man is a symbol of his glory I want to pray for you something will happen to you now every spirit that has stolen your glory like the hair of Samson every spirit in the similitude of Delilah that has come to make that your glory is cut short financial Delilah's ministerial Delilah's career Delilah's in the name of Jesus at the count of three the same way the hair of Samson grew back in the realm of the spirit I pray everything that has tampered with your glory let the judgment fire of God rest on it now rest on it now I make this declaration by prophecy therefore that in the name of Jesus and by the blood of the eternal covenant as you are laying your hands on your head in the name of Jesus you will never go down again you will never go down again in the name of Jesus we've overshot our time lift whatever communion if you came with any extra communion set for me to speak over we'll finish the balance of this next week during the miracle service but please lift whatever if you brought anything as a point of contact I just want to pray and speak over it for you in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare all these communion sets that you are lifting in the name of Jesus they are blessed as you take them with understanding they will no longer be ordinary bread and wafers but they will represent the power of God at work in your body let there be healing for you let there be total restoration there will be tears some testimonies as a result of this in the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen very quickly let me make the altar call our time is gone you are here and you are saying apostle even though it's time I need Jesus it is true that I prayed it is true that I shouted amen it is true that I fell under the anointing we have just a minute for this and we're done thank you so much for your patience I cannot end this meeting without giving you an opportunity to come to Jesus we have just one minute for you you are saying apostle I truly want to make it right with Jesus or you are saying apostle my life has gone haywire I need the grace of God I need restoration wherever you are please leave your seat and come and stand right here I know that our time is gone let's clap for them as they come even if it is one person I know that someone needs to come to Jesus don't be in a hurry going that you miss salvation Jesus is calling you koinonia celebrate them they are coming to Jesus all the overflows walk to your projector screen walk to your LEDs those who are in here keep coming run to Jesus we have one minute for you but please run to Jesus he wants to give you a new beginning this is what happens when we come to the house of God hallelujah are you coming quickly 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 please if you're coming come and stand as I lead you in this prayer my God look at these little children let's give them a big big God bless you hallelujah praise God thank you for making this bold decision can you lift your right hand high 
above your head those who are coming to join them join them very quickly say this loud and clear say lord jesus one more time say lord jesus i believe in you that you are the son of god i believe that you died for me i believe that you rose again for my justification right now i receive eternal life into my spirit i receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness i declare that i reign forever from today and forever i am a child of god washed by the blood of jesus declared righteous by redemption in jesus name father thank you for these ones you have brought them out by your spirit i declare that the grace that keeps will keep them the grace that lifts will lift them i declare that you begin a new walk i commend you to the holy spirit and to the word you will begin a new journey with god a journey that will only be from one victory to the other be blessed in jesus name i pray